response to the rash of ethics scandals involving the highest court in the land, being showered with gifts from shady billionaires, the Supreme Court unveiled its new code of ethics earlier this week. All nine justices signed the 14-page document, which includes five, the five canons of conduct under which justices should recuse themselves and is based on similar codes used by the lower courts. It requires justices to uphold the integrity and independence of the judiciary and avoid impropriety and the appearance of impropriety in all activities. In a statement attached to the code, the justices highlighted that the court has long had the equivalent of common law ethics rules, which they believe added to confusion around the court's behavior. The absence of a code, however, they write, has led, in recent years, to the misunderstanding that the justices of this court, unlike all other jurists in this country, regard themselves as unrestricted by any ethics rules. To dispel this misunderstanding, we are issuing this code, which largely represents a codification of principles that we have long regarded as governing our conduct. What does that mean in English? Nothing. It means absolutely nothing, not a Dick De Niro. That's right. The code of ethics that they have signed is a complete and utter joke. Now, does it, that doesn't mean that you know, the good justices that are in the Supreme Court won't abide by it. But that also means that the bad justices won't <laughs> because there's nothing there. There is no enforcement mechanism. There, the disclosures are completely voluntary. In fact, that there, there is no, literally no change from what they were doing before. This just tells you, hey, uh, this is the stuff that we were already doing, which was nothing, and we're gonna continue doing nothing. This is PR, meant to mollify people who are legitimately concerned that corporations and wealthy donors have literally purchased the highest court in the land using trips and gifts and hotel rooms and you know uh, all this you know fancy you know stuff that they were giving justices that they decided a lot of them decided not to record now ProPublica's investigations revealed that justice clarence thomas for example had been pocketing favors from republican real estate developer harlan crow including his <laughs> school tuition right private school tuition for his nephew, the renovation of the home where his mother still lives, and undisclosed trips on the billionaire's yacht, private jet, and at his private resort. Hmm. Uh, a lot of which, uh, by the way, uh, you go to that private resort, hobnobbing with, you know, with other billionaires and Federalist Society people, you know, you know, the, the, the normal people that they're supposed to hang around, you know, the, the, the ones that have possibly have business before the court. Yeah, so the people that you really want your justices being, you know, hanging out with and being influenced by. And we're just supposed to take their word that they're not influenced by this? Oh, come on. You're kidding me. Uh, now, two months later, the outlet also unveiled a similar scandal involving Justice Samuel Alito, who had failed to report a luxury fishing, fishing vacation to Alaska with hedge fund billionaire Paul Singer in 2008. And of course, you also have Neil Gorsuch. Earlier this year, Politico reported that a law firm head whose firm had multiple cases before the Supreme Court purchased property co-owned by Justice Gorsuch. Who bought it? Well, we didn't really know at first because Gorsuch decided not to disclose her identity instead of leaving the block, uh, box blank on the federal disclosure forms. You know, I'm sure that was just a, a little bit of an oversight. I, I'm sure he meant to disclose it and wasn't keeping it for whatever reason to, you know, hide the fact that he's a co-owner on that and that they have, uh, you know, this is before the Supreme Court. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that he would never do anything like that. That would be so unethical. Uh, no, <laughs> that's actually the reason that we need a code of ethics in the court. Now, whatever this is, this, this is, this is, this is worse than nothing, okay? It's, it's, it's a big middle finger. When asked about concerns over donor influence, failure to disclose gifts, failure to recuse from certain cases, Kathleen Clark, a law professor at Washington University in St. Louis specializing in legal and government ethics, says the, news, the new code doesn't address any of this stuff. She tells PBS in an interview, it does address the refusal problem by saying, 
nothing will change. It views recusal as a decision for an individual justice. And if a justice fails to recuse, the court won't do anything about it. Wow, great. This is entirely 100% worthless. We told you we're gonna do whatever we want and we're not gonna stop. F off, plebs. We don't care what you say. We're the Supreme Court. Who's gonna hold us accountable? Well, at this point, nobody. And that's the problem. Now, Professor Clark said there is something that they could do. Uh, and this was already proposed by Professor Stephen Vladek and, and, and others. Uh, and that's appoint an inspector general as some sort of mechanism to investigate allegations of wrongdoing or violations. Look, I, I don't know if that's something that you could do that wouldn't also end up getting corrupted at some point. Uh, it would depend on how this person gets appointed, who appoints them, et cetera. Would it have to be, you know, uh, uh, a nonpartisan body? Uh, I, I, I don't know the details of this, but I'm open to the idea because we need something. Something has to change here because it's pretty clear that if you leave it up to the court, they're not going to change a damn thing because why? There's no incentive to. And that's why the court will continue to be tainted by these allegations of impropriety when it comes to people, you know, uh, uh, groups, uh, billionaires that bring their cases before the court.